House Republicans continuing their focus on President Biden and his son Hunter. Most notably, House Oversight and Accountability Chairman James Comer, who's been looking into foreign business dealings and is now talking about issuing subpoenas. There's also news regarding the special counsel looking into the classified documents that had been found in President Biden's home. National political correspondent Kevin Cirilli is live in Washington and joins us now. Kevin, what's the latest on this? Well, there's a multitude of legal fronts for the current president, President Biden. Uh, this is NBC News reporting earlier today that President Biden's legal team meeting with the special counsel with regards to how to set up a potential interview for President Biden to testify for his handling, Veronica, of classified documents uh, uh, that he ultimately gave back uh, to the investigators. Again, President Biden, his legal team meeting with the special counsel that's looking into his handling of classified documents and whether or not President Biden will, in fact, testify before the special counsel separately from that on the house side of things house republicans investigating the biden family's business dealings yesterday releasing a memo with some of their finding and let's pull up uh, some of that memo in which they write uh, quote uh, hunter biden uh, and Devin Archer, who testified behind closed doors earlier this week, used Rosemont Seneca entities to bring in millions of dollars in oligarchs from Europe and Asia, including from countries like Russia and Kazakhstan. In February of 2014, a Russian oligarch sending $3.5 million to a shell company associated with Hunter Biden and Devin Archer. And then in the spring of 2014, a Ukrainian oligarch placing Archer and Biden on Hunter Biden on the Burisma board of directors and agreeing to pay them $1 million each annually per year. And then in April of 2014, according to this Republican memo leaked yesterday, a Kazakhstani oligarch wiring the exact price of Hunter Biden's sports car into a bank account that has been utilized by Devin Archer and by Hunter Biden. Take a listen to what the House Oversight Committee Chairman uh, James Comer said about this yesterday. Here he is. Before we released the memo, we interviewed Devin Archer, who is one of the associates who was partial owner of one of the shell companies that the Bidens were receiving money from foreign nationals and then laundering it into Biden bank accounts. The overwhelming majority of the wire transfers happened while Joe Biden was vice president, and they happened days after he left those countries with foreign aid checks or talking about foreign aid. So, so there is a pattern here that should concern every American with respect to corruption in the White House. And very quickly, the chairman has said that he is considering issuing subpoenas to the Biden family members, as well as the president himself, to testify on this side of the investigation. That process could play out in court, which is separate from the, uh, from the testimony regarding the co uh, classified documents. And then finally, House Speaker Kevin McCarthy leaving the door open to a, a potential impeachment inquiry sometime in the fall. Veronica. All right, Kevin's really live for us in Washington. Kevin, always appreciate it. Thank you. So most of the 2024 Republican presidential field and two long shot challengers to President Biden are heading to Iowa for its celebrated annual state fair. The two week event is one of the biggest in the state and it's where White House hopefuls engage in retail politics to boost their fortunes for the Iowa caucuses, which are now just five months away. Florida Capitol reporter Forrest Saunders is at the state fair to tell us what we can expect this weekend. Betwixt the cows, both butter and real. A real chance for politicians to make an impression on Iowans in the coming days. I'm pretty much just here for politics, yes. And some cows. Carly Stee, just one of what could be more than a million people attending over the next week and a half. It has long shot candidates like entrepreneur Perry Johnson not wasting time. In Iowa, the only way you win their vote is by meeting the people. He's here for at least three days of retail politics, hoping shoe leather will beef up his chances. So if you don't recognize the fact that you have to go and meet the people, shake their hands, in fact, they may have to meet you several times. And if you don't, aren't willing to do that, your chances of winning the nomination go down precipitously. Joining him, almost every Republican running in 2024, Haley, Ramaswamy, DeSantis, Suarez, and many more hoping a stump speech and a handshake will set them apart. I'm a small town guy from southern Indiana. I mean, this is this is my strike zone. Former VP Mike Pence was on hand for opening day, but unable to get away from a barrage of questions about his role on January 6. President Trump uh, was wrong when he asked me and then he's told the American people ever since that I had the right to overturn the election. I, I had no right to overturn the election. 
Speaking of Trump, the former president continues to hold a solid lead in polling heading into the fair. Even so, he too is planning to make a stop on Saturday. The details aren't yet known, but perhaps not too curiously, Trump will be traveling with Florida members of Congress that endorsed him over his chief rival, Governor Ron DeSantis. That was Forrest Saunders. They're reporting for us from Des Moines, Iowa. Make sure you tune in to Scripps News tomorrow for live coverage from the Iowa State Fair. We're going to hear from the 2024 candidates on both sides of the aisle, and our special coverage begins at noon Eastern. In the meantime, here's what's straight ahead on Scripps News Live. Power strain. Why severe weather may not be the biggest problem facing the electric grid right now. We'll be right back. Americans will spend $41 billion on auto repairs. That's right, billions with a B. Why is that number so high? Because cars break down. Your vehicle is going to end up in a shop like this too, and if it's no longer under warranty, you're the one who has to pay the bill, and it could cost you thousands of dollars. That is, unless you call CarShield. With a plan through CarShield, administrators will pay for those costly repairs directly to the mechanic of your choice, including dealerships. That means you get protection on major parts and systems like the engine, transmission, electrical systems, and more. Plus, 24-7 emergency services for flat or damaged tires, lockouts, dead batteries, and towing at no additional cost. And there are even rental car options to keep you on the road. I've been a mechanic for 35 plus years now. I've seen thousands of repairs over the years. My happiest customers are the ones that come in do have some kind of auto protection policy that's gonna cover the repair that they wouldn't expect in any way. I feel great about recommending CarShield to everybody I see. CarShield has a rich history of dependability, reliability, and success, and has been featured on leading networks like ABC, CNN, Fox News, and more. CarShield is America's most trusted auto protection company. My mom told me to call CarShield, and I saved $5,000. You should always listen to your mom. As soon as my car broke down, CarShield jumped into action, and I had my car back within days. I've been with CarShield for close to seven years. I have three vehicles covered, and I saved close to $9,000. I called CarShield and saved over $5,000. Yes, CarShield is a good value. Every plan through CarShield comes with a price lock guarantee, which means no matter how many repairs you need, the price you pay today will never change for as long as you cover your car. Call now and save money with your price lock guarantee. It's not a matter of if your car will break down, but when. Call CarShield now before it's too late. Call 800-287-5264. 800-287-5264. Eight hundred two eight seven five two six four. Hey. Hey, I'm inside the bank. Where's the five hundred dollars? What? I don't have much time. Where's the five hundred dollars? I said drop your bank, not rob your bank. What? I said drop your bank and get Dave. The banking app. Yeah, I thought this was a lot of work for five hundred dollars. You think? I mean, I would love it if you could uh, come get me. Oh no. Well, she going to jail. Hello? There's an easier way you can get up to $500 in five minutes or less when you download Dave. I'm Del Walters, and this is The Debrief. Nearly 40 million Americans on alert. Breaking down the headlines. We're going to take a deeper dive. Scripps News brings you reporting from across the country. In downtown Baltimore. Live in Maricopa County. And around the world. The counteroffensive is likely to kick off. Scripps News. London. With up-to-the-minute information, giving you the whole story. Let's get you caught up on some of today's top stories. The Debrief, live tonight, starting at 6, 5 central, only on Scripps News. 23 minutes after the hour, I want to get you back to Washington, where Attorney General Merrick Garland is now speaking about the investigation into the president's son, Hunter Biden. Let's go ahead and listen right here. Good afternoon. I'm here today to announce the appointment of David Weiss as a special counsel, consistent with the Department of Justice regulations governing such matters. In keeping with those regulations, I have today notified the designated members of each House of Congress of the appointment. In February 2018, after being nominated by the former president and confirmed by the Senate, Mr. Weiss was sworn in as the United States Attorney for the District of Delaware. Mr. Weiss had been a career prosecutor, having served previously in the office for more than a decade. Beginning in 2019, Mr. Weiss, in his capacity as U.S. Attorney and along with federal law enforcement partners, began investigating allegations of certain criminal conduct by, among others, 
Robert Hunter Biden. That investigation has been recently referenced in federal criminal proceedings in the District of Delaware, and as noted in those proceedings and other public statements by Mr. Weiss's office, that investigation remains ongoing. In February 2021, U.S. Attorney Weiss was asked to remain as U.S. Attorney for the District of Delaware and, in that capacity, to continue to lead the investigation. As I said before, Mr. Weiss would be permitted to continue his investigation, take any investigative steps he wanted, and make the decision whether to prosecute in any district. Mr. Weiss has told Congress that he has been granted ultimate authority over this matter, including the responsibility for deciding where, when, and whether to file charges and for making decisions necessary to preserve the integrity of any prosecution consistent with federal law, the principles of federal prosecution, and departmental policies. In a July 2023 letter to Congress, Mr. Weiss said that he had not to that point requested special counsel designation. On Tuesday of this week, Mr. Weiss advised me that in his judgment, his investigation had reached a stage at which he could, should continue his work as a special counsel, and he asked to be so appointed. Upon considering his request, as well as the extraordinary circumstances relating to this matter, I have concluded that it is in the public interest to appoint him as special counsel. This appointment confirms my commitment to provide Mr. Weiss all the resources he requests. It also reaffirms that Mr. Weiss has the authority he needs to conduct a thorough investigation and to continue to take the steps he deems appropriate independently, based only on the facts and the law. Mr. Weiss will also continue to serve as U.S. Attorney for the District of Delaware. As Special Counsel, he will continue to have the authority and responsibility that he has previously exercised to oversee the investigation and decide where, when, and whether to file charges. The special counsel will not be subject to the day-to-day -day supervision of any official of the department, but he must comply with the regulations, procedures, and policies of the department. We've been listening in to Attorney General Merrick Garland there announcing a special counsel, special counsel David Weiss in the Hunter Biden probe. We're gonna have much more on the story throughout the afternoon. In the meantime, I'm Veronica Della Cruz. For the audience leaving us right now, your local programming is up next. And don't forget, you can always check us out on scriptsnews.com. Now, if you're staying with us, we have much more news headed your way right here on Scripps News Live. We'll be right back. CVS is quiet about this program, giving away generic Viagra for just 87 cents. This is from CVS. Look, nine tablets, 100 milligram sildenafil, AKA generic Viagra for $406. That's $45 a tablet. This is from Walgreens, $417 for nine tablets of 100 milligram sildenafil or $46 per tablet. You can get the exact same tablets from Friday plans for just 87 cents. Text LID LID to 69069 to get generic Viagra for just 87 cents. All you got to do is answer a few medical questions on their website. One of their doctors will prescribe you online if appropriate. Right now, Friday Plans is offering $10 off your first package, so you can get nine tablets for just $15, including taxes and fees. The prescription is free and the shipping is free as well. Text LID LID to 69069 today. One way to avoid expensive car repair bills is to be a race car driver. The other is endurance. Endurance saved me more than $7,000. Without endurance, breakdowns can cost thousands. With endurance, you're covered. Endurance covers nearly every car on the road. Plus, you pick the mechanic you trust. Act now for $300 off any plan, plus a year of elite benefits and a 30-day money-back guarantee. Call 1-855-588-2580 now. Meet Pear Eyewear, the only glasses brand that lets you change your glasses like you change your clothes. With hundreds of designs, Pear makes it easy to match your style and build a collection you'll love. Shop now at PearEyewear.com. When Lila was ready to sell her ring, she sent it to Worthy, where they took care of everything and auctioned it on her terms. 
Then, Worthy sent Lila her money. You're worthy of more. Get started at worthy.com. Hey there, welcome to Scripps News Live. I'm Veronica Della Cruz. Thank you so much for stopping by on this Friday. Always good to see you. Let's get you caught up in the day's top stories right now. Rescue efforts continue in Maui as fast moving wildfires leave a path of destruction. The death toll now standing at 55, but those numbers could be much higher. But conditions on the ground right now are making it difficult to get a full grasp of how many are still unaccounted for. More than 11,000 people are still without power. 14,000 have lost their homes. As much as I was trying to save and, and, and let people know, there was no options. I just had to go. I went and got my kids and we were stuck. And now I got the news that there's like so many friends that... I don't know if they made it. Many people are flooding airports trying to find a way to safety. Striking Hollywood writers headed back to the bargaining table today. The two sides met last week to discuss possibly restarting negotiations. Screenwriters walking off the job 102 days ago. They say the rise of streaming services has changed both the nature of their work and how much they're paid. The United Kingdom's economy grew slightly between April and June, but analysts warn that it may not last. In fact, the National Institute of Economic and Social Research says it may not return to pre-pandemic levels until the third quarter of next year. It predicts a 60% chance of a recession by the end of the year. The UK's inflation rate is 7.9%, and the Bank of England wants to bring it down to 2%. In the meantime, U.S. experts aren't nearly as pessimistic about the health of the American economy. National correspondent Nathaniel Reed says at first glance, numbers released yesterday look worrisome, but looking behind those numbers tells a different story. Cautious optimism from economic experts as last month's inflation data hit the markets. The Labor Department's Consumer Price Index has spoken. Overall consumer prices were up 3.2 percent from a year earlier. That's up from a 3% annual spike back in June. After 12 straight months of decreasing numbers, seeing any increase might be a bit disconcerting, but it's actually slightly lower than what analysts were expecting. And experts say the more important number to consider here is the core inflation rate. That came in at a mild 0.2%. Any way you look at it, this has been a successful or certainly a more successful compared to historical um, efforts to deal with, with these sort of shocks. So yes, there's been a bit of an uptick here in these numbers, but overall, it's good news for Americans who've been feeling the strain on their wallets for years now. Take food, for example. Prices are still up 4.9% over the past 12 months. But between June and July, the cost of items like eggs, meat, beer, and dairy all went down in price. The gasoline index saw a modest bump of 0.2% last month. But that was offset by falling electricity prices, a 0.7% drop from June to July. And used car costs continued their downward trend as well. Prices fell for a second straight month, down 1.3% from June and 5.6% from this time last year. I think people overall, economists overall, are more confident and maybe more confused, but in a, in a positive way about the fact that this has been a rather successful uh, effort by the Fed to maintain slow increases, incremental increases in the interest rate to bring down the money supply and bring down the inflation rate. Some analysts say the steady slowdown could keep the Federal Reserve from raising interest rates once again when they meet in September. Last month, the Fed bumped rates from a range between 5.25 percent and 5.5 percent, a two-decade high. Nathaniel Reed, Scripps News, Washington. So the Bureau of Labor Statistics says that beef prices are a major reason that grocery bills rose 0.3 percent in July. Beef prices went up an average of 2.4 percent. Increases varied by the cut of meat. Beef roast cost 6.5 percent more, while ground beef was up 1.5 percent. Droughts and higher feed costs have forced ranchers to sell their livestock earlier, which has reduced supplies. In the meantime, Tyson says chicken and pork prices have dropped during the last quarter. But also rising are mortgage rates. Florida's housing market has taken a major hit as mortgage rates reach a 22-year high. Matt says with Scripps News West Palm Beach says potential homebuyers have been sitting things out. Not only does the house cost more, 
but financing the house also costs more. Bank rate economist Greg McBride spells out the dilemma facing home buyers now, soaring mortgage rates after a period of crazy low rates over a year ago that had the South Florida housing market hotter than our summer temperatures. Month over month, year over year, New mortgage applications are down. Refinance applications are down. FAU's Ken Johnson tells us these high rates, not seen in over 20 years, can't help but put a chill into South Florida home buyers. People are simply saying that price with that rate is just too high for me to go forward. But there's definitely some contribution to the shortage of inventory uh, being brought about by People are saying, if I sell my home, I've got to refinance at this much higher rate. Nervous buyers and reluctant sellers could have many homes on the sidelines during this high rate roller coaster. If inflation comes down in a meaningful way and there's a prospect of, of reduced interest rates down the road, that's the type of impetus that we could bring, see bringing mortgage rates down. I just don't expect that on the near term horizon. Adjustable rate mortgages, not as common and popular, can offer a lower introductory rate. But experts warn going that route could also see your monthly mortgage rate soar, especially if these rates keep trending upward. And that was Matt Sesney reporting for us there from West Palm Beach, Florida. Coming up next on Scripps News Live, the Supreme Court blocking Purdue Pharma's $6 billion bankruptcy settlement. We're going to explain what this all could mean for the company's owners and the victims of the opioid crisis. Also, a closer look at the pressures trauma nurses face when a patient's life is in their hands. It's me, Sebastian, and it is a beautiful day today. We have so much to be grateful for. So just remember, if you see someone without a smile, give them one of yours. I just love inspiring people to be the best they can be. And the reason I'm able to inspire so many people is because people like you who inspire me with your support of Shriners Hospitals for Children. Since I was little, I've broken a hundred bones and I've had 19 surgeries. Shriners Hospitals for Children was with me every step of the way. But more than that, they've given me the confidence to know I can do whatever I set my mind to. Like right now, I've set my mind to sharing my smile with you. Did you get it? Because of people like you, I can play the violin. I can play piano. I can understand. The help I get is only possible because of caring people like you who pick up the phone and call the number on your screen to make your monthly gift. And when you call or go online right now to donate $19 a month or more, we'll send you this adorable Love to the Rescue blanket as a thank you and a reminder of all the smiles you're bringing to kids' faces every day. Kids like me. And me. And me. And me. So what are you waiting for? You can inspire kids like me by visiting loveshiners.org. After all, you can't help everyone, but you can help someone. So let's go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for giving. Join me and bring a smile to the world with your monthly gift today. Please call now. If operators are busy, please call again or go to loveshiners.org right away. Join me and bring a smile to the world. How can a photo become a vibrant part of your home? When you go to TriFracture.com and print your images directly on glass. Get beautiful depth and clarity on a sleek, frameless print that's easy to hang and looks incredible in any space. Go to TriFracture.com now to save 20% on glass prints. The Omaha Steaks Anniversary Sale is here. For over a century, we've guaranteed the highest quality in everything we offer. To celebrate, we're offering you 50% off site-wide. That means you'll save 50% and get our 100% guarantee that you'll love every bite. Never tried Omaha Steaks? Save an extra $30 with promo code FIRSTTIME. Visit omahasteaks.com slash TV today. Once upon a time, why drag? I think they, they have every right to do what they want to do. But just... they don't have every right. We don't want your straight child to turn gay. We want your gay child to survive.
Welcome back. I'm Veronica Dela Cruz. Attorney General Merrick Garland announcing that he will appoint a special counsel in the Department of Justice's investigation into Hunter Biden. David Weiss, a U.S. attorney in Delaware, has been investigating the financial and business dealings of the president's son since 2019. Garland said Weiss asked to be appointed as special counsel so he could continue his work. Weiss will also continue to concurrently serve as U.S. attorney for the District of Delaware, a position he was appointed to by former President Donald Trump. House Republicans are also preparing their own investigation into Hunter Biden. And the Supreme Court stepping into the fight against the opioid crisis again. Justices ruled yesterday to halt the $6 billion bankruptcy settlement for Purdue Pharma. National correspondent Maura Sirianni explains what comes next. The Supreme Court halting the bankruptcy deal for Purdue Pharma. The settlement included a $6 billion payout from the Sackler family, the billionaire Sackler family who once controlled the company, and for victims and their families who thought the finish line was near. This likely means those payments now will be delayed. The Supreme Court Thursday temporarily blocking a settlement that would shield the billionaire Sackler family from civil lawsuits. Over the toll, the opioid crisis has taken on families and communities across the U.S. Opioid manufacturer Purdue Pharma filed for bankruptcy in 2019 because it was facing thousands of lawsuits over its highly addictive drug OxyContin. In May, an appeals court approved the controversial settlement deal which would have allowed Purdue Pharma to reorganize and emerge from bankruptcy as a new company called NOAA, with profits going towards fighting the opioid crisis. As part of the deal, the Sackler family would contribute $6 billion toward opioid settlements and would be protected from future lawsuits. The Justice Department sued, saying the immunity part of the deal allowed the Sacklers to take advantage of bankruptcy law meant to protect people in severe financial distress, not billionaires. This family really does have a singular role and responsibility, and, and I think uh, it's a big question what, what precedent this is going to set for companies in the future. A Purdue spokesperson said in a statement the company is, quote, disappointed that the U.S. trustee has been able to single-handedly delay billions of dollars in value that should be put to use for victim compensation, opioid crisis abatement for communities across the country, and overdose rescue medicines. The high court is now expected to hear arguments over the deal in December. In the late 90s, Purdue began aggressively marketing opioids like OxyContin to treat chronic pain. The drug, however, proved to be addictive, thousands of patients turning to crime in order to acquire it, while thousands of others died from abusing it. The National Institute on Drug Abuse reports opioid-involved overdose deaths rose from 21,000 in 2010 to nearly 48,000 in 2017, followed by a significant increase in 2020, Roughly 68,000 reported overdose deaths, and in 2021, another staggering jump, a reported 80,000. The Biden administration has not yet commented on Thursday's Supreme Court decision. However, in the past, called the settlement unprecedented. Mara Sirianni, Scripps News. All right, Mara, thank you so much. When trauma strikes, nurses don't hesitate to step up to save lives. Megan Chin with Scripps News Indianapolis shows us what it takes to care for critically ill or injured patients. Definitely adrenaline kicks in. When trauma comes in. This is something that you train for. This is something that you prepare for. Nurses jump into action. And you're trying to anticipate what's going to happen. It seems almost easy to anticipate. We're anticipating it to be a high volume day and a high trauma day. Based on what's happening in the rest of the city, but especially during the summer. Uh, more activities, motorcycles, boats, Things like unhelmeted motorcycle accidents, car accidents, and shootings happen year-round. It can be very stressful, but it's a controlled chaos. On the day we stopped by, a flood of ambulances greeted us at the entrance. Okay, Register nurses like Jennifer Burchette embrace the chaos. This trauma center's got a process in place. We get used to this kind of rhythm of how the day's going to go. We know that as the day goes, we're going to get busier and busier, and then eventually our numbers will stop dropping. She's a pro, but I want to know, what does it take to be a trauma nurse? I suited up to find out. 
when traumas come in, we have to make sure that we're protecting ourselves and wearing appropriate PPE. This is an example leg. Correct. Gunshot wound. Yes, okay. yes. And how soon should you put something like this on after? As fast as you can. It would be unlikely, although it has happened, that we would be placing these here in the in the department. Mm -hmm. So your, your main goal is mm -hmm. to stabilize. Stabilize. That's all. Just yep. to get them to the next people who can actually yep. Yep. treat more. Sometimes, as we've seen today, our patients were here for not even 10 minutes and they were rolled to the OR. Yep. So we try to do as much as we can, as fast as we can uh, While others upon arrival. Come in. You got it. Why not race to see if I can put on a stop the bleed kit as fast as a full-time trauma nurse? Go. Okay. Hey. Two right. inches above. Okay, cool. Wrap nice and up. tight, right? Nice and tight. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Look at you, done. <laughs> Hey, well done, well done. I learned from the best. Oh no. <laughs> Next up, chest tubes. Go ahead and pull that out for me. And then everything you need is right here. So go ahead and put that little nozzle in all and right. squeeze all of that water in. Just like that. And we're gonna hook that up to the blue where you put the water in. Okay. You got it. And then it's ready to connect into that chest tube. So That's this is important to get onto the patient soon. That's right because then we're evacuating that space where potentially blood was mm -hmm. that is not enabling that patient to breathe easy. It's all about anticipating people's needs and working well under pressure. Also, the ABCs when it comes to being a trauma nurse. Airway, breath, and cardiovascular. Everyone follows the same algorithm, but each nurse plays a specific role. Talk about it being kind of controlled chaos. There will be 10 people in this room all trying to take care of one person. Knowing the equipment and space powers success in this job, saving lives by stabilizing one Hoosier at a time. I'm Megan Shin reporting. An Arizona teenager already on her way to a medical career. She's made history as Arizona State University's youngest nursing school grad. Cameron Polom with Scripps News Phoenix has her story. I'm first going to have you turn your head to the left and right. She may not be old enough to drive. I'm just going to have you let this like kind of flop to the table there. Perfect. But in less than a year's time, 15 year old Eliana Tenenbaum will become the youngest person to ever graduate from ASU's Edison College of Nursing program. Well, from a very young age, I've been passionate about medicine and helping others. And I think that largely has to do with my dad, who is a general practitioner. It was at his office where she was first introduced to what would become her future passion. Under his watchful eye, she even gave her first B12 shot to her dad at just four years old. He taught me how to do thyroid ultrasounds and interpret them at eight years old. So it only makes sense that next summer she'll receive her BSN, just the first step in her journey to becoming a nurse practitioner. Her determination to succeed came into focus even further during the pandemic. Well, it definitely served as an eye-opener event, but I really would say that it honestly reinforced my idea of becoming a nurse because look, we need people so badly to help care for patients, and I want to be one of those people. Eliana graduated high school early while also being enrolled in college courses, a pace of learning she's come to embrace now within ASU's 16-month accelerated nursing program. We need capable, intelligent, um, unafraid, and you know, bold nurses out there. Clinical associate professor Dr. Olivia Munoz Rascon says they are attributes she saw in Eliana immediately. Well, seeing these students that have this fire, that have this excitement, that have just this drive, that it gives me hope for the future of our nursing profession. And I think that's exactly what we need right now. In Phoenix, I'm Cameron Polum reporting. Congratulations. Russia is heading to the moon for the first time in nearly 50 years. The Luna 25 craft launched earlier this morning. Russia's government says this is a way to ensure it's, quote, guaranteed access to the moon's surface. The spacecraft is slated to orbit around the moon for up to seven days and then land on August 23rd, which is the same day as an Indian shuttle. The Soviet Union, the U.S., and China are the only countries with successful moon landings. The next American moon mission will happen in November. 
Straight ahead on Scripps News Live, more and more people backing off the booze and sipping mocktails instead. We're going to hear from one woman about how her business has been booming. That's next. Hi, Kirk Kaiser here. If you're on Medicare and Medicaid or new to Medicare, you can call the number on your screen and check your zip code for a Medicare Advantage plan that may have extra benefits and may even save you money. It's as easy as one, two, three. One, call the number on your screen. Two, you'll be immediately connected with a licensed insurance agent to check your eligibility for a Medicare Advantage plan that may offer extra benefits and save you money. Three, you'll get a free, no obligation Medicare benefits review. That's right. There's no cost for the call or the Medicare benefits review and and no obligation to enroll. You don't get extra benefits or cost savings automatically. Call now. I'm on a fixed income, and I want a plan that fits my monthly budget. Remember, you don't get extra benefits or cost savings automatically. Call now. The call and Medicare Advantage plan review are free. There is no obligation to enroll. Just call 800-484-0720 now. That's 800-484-0720. If you're on Medicare and Medicaid or new to Medicare, you can call the number on your screen and check your zip code for a Medicare Advantage plan that may have extra benefits and may even save you money. It's as easy as one, two, three. One, call the number on your screen. Two, you'll be immediately connected with a licensed insurance agent to check your eligibility for a Medicare Advantage plan that may offer extra benefits and save you money. Three, you'll get a free, no obligation Medicare benefits review. That's right. There's no cost for the call or the Medicare benefits review and no obligation to enroll. You don't get extra benefits or cost savings automatically. Call now. I didn't know there are plans in my area with additional benefits. Maybe I should call. Remember, you don't get extra benefits or cost savings automatically. If you're on Medicare and Medicaid or new to Medicare, call the number on your screen now for your free, no obligation Medicare benefits review. Just call 800-484-0720 now. That's 800-484-0720. Welcome to this year's cheese rolling competition. Who will catch the cheese and win the $500 prize? They are lined up and let's roll it! <laughs> Who looks like we got a first timer coming down the hill now. Is a leg supposed to bend that way? Not naturally. Yeah, look at them go. Barrel rolling down the hill. That's going to leave a mark. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Ooh, it's not so easy to get a quick $500, is it? <laughs> no, it's not, Dan. There's an easier way you can get up to $500 in five minutes or less when you download Dave. I work at Lumi Deodorant, and I'm going to tell you how to get the best deal on Lumi. It's the starter pack. You pick two full-size deodorants, and you get two mystery items for free and free shipping. So now's your chance to try Lumi Whole Body Deodorant with 72 hours of odor control. Every Friday, the WNBA is on Ion. Wow. Tonight, Kalia and the Sky take on Brianna and the Liberty, and Natasha Cloud and the Mystics battle Asia Wilson and the Aces. Coverage starts tonight at 8. Check local listings for games in your area, only on Ion. All right, so apparently Duncan wants to be a part of the spiked drink market. USA Today reporting the chain plans to launch iced coffees and tea containing alcohol in states that will allow it. The drinks will be known as Duncan Spiked. Original caramel, mocha, and vanilla iced coffee flavors will reportedly contain 6% alcohol. Duncan's tea flavors will be available with 5% alcohol. But in the meantime, there is a new trend in the drink space called Sober Curious. It's a growing movement among younger Americans who choose not to drink alcohol in order to maintain a healthy lifestyle. Now, the trend is giving rise to a new business boom, mocktails. National correspondent Stephanie Sandoval caught up with a store owner in Nashville who opened up a booze-free beverage shop. Take a look. In a society deeply rooted in alcohol, more Americans are saying bottoms up with booze-free drinks. Yeah, yeah, I like that. It's a cultural shift some are calling the mocktail movement. To help Stephanie Still, who quit drinking alcohol in 2020, opened a booze-free bottle shop in Nashville called Killjoy. We opened on April 1st, no, not a joke. <laughs> so we have about 30 kinds of wine. Um, we have spirits. We have all the spirits that you, you know, would traditionally use in a drink. So if you wanted to swap out tequila, gin, rum, mezcal, um, whiskey, we have all of those. These beverages are produced without alcohol using natural flavoring instead. 
while some products are even de-alcoholized, where the alcohol is removed using a process like reverse osmosis. And because alcohol is taken out of the picture, many non-alcoholic products contain fewer to no calories and barely, if any, sugar. Some manufacturers have also started adding natural mood and energy boosters, like ashwagandha. This is kind of a calming, relaxing thing with adaptogens, um, ashwagandha, some lion's mane, lemon balm. Oh, that's good. It's like spicy. I just really wanted a place where you could go to find these and where somebody was knowledgeable about them and could help you, you know, kind of navigate this new terrain. What's causing the shift? Younger people are drinking less than older generations, with many Gen Zers choosing to abstain from alcohol, focusing more on health yes, and wellness. According to a survey conducted by market researchers at NC Solutions, Gen Z respondents reported they only have three drinks a week, compared to millennials and baby boomers who said they average five drinks a week. It also found 34 percent of Americans are trying to drink less in 2023. I think that it's amazing because there's so many benefits to not drinking alcohol and yeah, I don't think people enough people talk about it. According to the CDC, excessive alcohol use, which includes heavy drinking for men, that's 15 drinks or more per week for women, eight drinks or more per week can lead to long term health risks like high blood pressure, liver disease, different types of cancer and memory problems. That long list also includes mental health problems, including depression and anxiety. And I think the amount of information that's come out in the past couple of years about how harmful alcohol actually is to your health, it's becoming hard to ignore. Still says they see new customers walk in every day, many surprised that a store like this exists. Typically they're very excited about it, which I wouldn't expect just any random person to be that excited about it. Um, so that is real evidence to me that the culture is shifting, especially amongst young people. Catherine Lundquist made the switch this year and is now enjoying a sober lifestyle. I've been sober for about five months. It has been incredible. It has been thrilling, exhilarating, exhausting, and terrifying. <laughs> and I'm here for all of it. It has shown me a lot of things that were missing in my life that I was using alcohol to mask. Right. She helps the shop when it hosts community events and says she's grateful Nashville has a booze free store where sober or sober curious minds can come together over mocktails. Just because you have to have a drink in your hand doesn't mean that it has to be booze, you know? Stephanie Sandoval, Scripps News, Nashville. All right, from Dunkin' Donuts to Krispy Kremes, you know, the donut store. It's also trying to add a little fall into our sweltering summers for us. And we can sum it up in two words. Pumpkin spice. No alcohol, but it sure does look good, right? We're talking about the donuts. A new pumpkin spice cheesecake swirl donut. Also, this pumpkin space maple pecan donut. Those are, are hitting store shelves. There are also pumpkin spice lattes and coffees. Now, the flavors are also available not just in the donut stores, but at some grocery stores as well. Mm. Not quite ready for fall, but okay. Thank you so much for watching Scripps News Live. I'm Veronica De La Cruz. For the audience leaving us right now, your local programming is up next. Don't forget, you can always check us out on ScrippsNews.com. And if you are staying with us, we have much more news headed your way right now on Scripps News Live. If you're living with diabetes, this is the sound that could change your life. Great news for people living with diabetes. Now you can wear a continuous glucose monitor and eliminate routine finger sticks. The days of repeated painful finger sticks are over. Call 800-719-8907. If you use insulin daily to manage your condition, a continuous glucose monitor could help you control your diabetes and reduce or eliminate those painful finger sticks. If you have Medicare or private insurance, US Med can deliver a CGM system right to your door. And if you qualify, there may be little or no cost to you. Shipping is free and we'll even bill your insurer directly. Call now to get your continuous glucose monitoring system so you can take control of your diabetes and get back to enjoying life. Call 800-719-8907, that's 800-719-8907. Carvana has hundreds of thousands of five-star reviews and counting. The whole process was really simple and easy. And this is my third time selling to Carvana. You just enter your license plate or your VIN, answer a few questions, boom, you get a real offer. Sell your car to Carvana today. 
If you're one of the many people struggling financially right now, Bridget's got your back. They'll send you $50 to $250 instantly with no credit check or interest. Download the Bridget app today and get $50 to $250 instantly. Wounded Warrior Project has been with me every step of my journey. They've helped me realize it's possible to rise to the top again. It's possible to get the help I need for me and my family. It's possible to hate push-ups again. To feel understood. To begin healing both inside and out. To feel like myself again. And now I know anything is possible. It was just panic. People were crying on the side of the road and begging. And it was a man. I'm never going to forget him as long as I live. He laid in the middle of the road and just cried and pleaded to, to Jesus that that we were going to be safe. You know, it was. Oh. Emotion from a woman who's lived in Maui for 20 years. She says she's in shock and disbelief after losing her home to the wildfire burning across the island. Residents had a little warning before they had to escape. Thank you so much for joining us on this Friday afternoon. I'm Veronica Dela Cruz. Welcome to Scripps News Live. At this hour, at least 55 people have died, and that number could climb as search and rescue efforts continue. Officials say the winds that rapidly spread the flames have died down. The fire is now 80% contained. But Maui County's mayor says the historic town of Lahaina is, quote, all gone. These past few days, the resolve of our families, businesses, and visitors have been tested like never before in our lifetime. With lives lost and properties decimated, we are grieving with each other during this inconsolable time. Thousands of people have already been flown off the island, but there are new questions today about why there wasn't more advanced warning to evacuate. Meteorologist Scott Withers is live for us right now in Maui. Uh, Scotty, bring us up to speed on what is happening right now. Will these efforts to contain the fires, where do things stand? So we just saw a fire crew leave. They've been down there all night working. They're still trying to get these fires pushed out. The winds fortunately have died down. They had picked back up this morning. You were talking about people not having enough warning. I just literally minutes ago talked to a man who rode out the fire on the beach in Lahaina, and he says there was a small fire up in the hills, but he says it burns every year, and they normally just bring in some helicopters and drop water on it. They couldn't do it because of the winds. He said it exploded and just roared through the town. He said it was like fire nados everywhere. And now he says, unfortunately, everything down there is gone. The governor's telling residents that are going in to search and look for anything that's salvageable. They need to be prepared because it is shocking. As the smoke clears, the extent of the devastation is overwhelming. Lahaina looks like a bomb went off. There is nothing left. Nearly every building in the historic tourist town, gone. Scorched cars lining the streets, parked outside where homes and businesses used to stand. It looked as if um, it's just the whole town was devastated. The whole town was decimated. The flames, driven by winds gusting up to 80 miles per hour, scattering embers everywhere, igniting everything. Driving through, you couldn't see any structures of the buildings. It looked like a bomb went off. All the, the cars with full gas tanks that reached the fire, they were exploded. Officials don't know what sparked the fire. That investigation will come later. Now the focus is on the search and rescue and recovery and caring for the injured and now homeless. Thousands of residents and tourists filling shelters. The Church of Jesus Christ of the Latter-day Saints operating around the clock, feeding, housing, and closing hundreds in need. It is devastating and it's heartbreaking. I've never seen our island like this. I've never seen this kind of devastation. For this newly engaged couple, they're trying to remain upbeat despite losing everything. It's all I have. Same clothes for I lost my social security, my wallet, my purse, everything, man, it's gone. The island is in a unique dilemma. Thousands of residents in desperate need and thousands of tourists trying to leave. 11,000 flying out on Thursday but many remain stuck, needing to get their belongings from the evacuation zone before they can leave. But for now, no one can go in. We gotta stay at a positive attitude, bring positive back, 
Even though it hurts inside, we still got to build up the count. Even when they have to rebuild everything. Residents here are slowly starting to come to grips with the enormity of the disaster, Veronica, that has unfolded just a mile down the road from me here. We were talking earlier about those 55 confirmed dead. We need to point out those are just the confirmed dead that they found outside of buildings and houses. The search is still undergoing, and now FEMA has sent in cadaver dogs. We've just, just moments ago, saw a large group of search and rescue crews going into the disaster zone, Veronica. This is not something that's going to be cleaned up in days. This is going to be a years long process and is going to take billions of dollars to rebuild down there. Veronica. Scotty, take us back to the beginning and remind us how this happened because the island was preparing for a hurricane, Hurricane Dora, but suddenly there were these fires. How did these fires break out? Okay, so the man that I talked to, the resident that lives down there, he said there are normally fires up in the mountains during the summer. It burns every summer. So he said he was up drinking his coffee. He saw the fire. It was no big deal. It was small. But keep in mind, Hurricane Dora moved to the south of the, of the island. And when it did that, it didn't cause any damage directly to the island, but it spun up a whole bunch of winds. And the wind came up, and they just got channeled right across the island, up and over the hills. And when they came down the hills, they were getting gusts of 80 miles per hour. That just grabbed those fires and just blew them up and that went straight down into the town. That's how all this happened and it happened so quickly. There was no warning because it was just a small fire, but those winds blew it up very quickly. Right, meteorologist Scott Withers there in Maui. Scotty, we appreciate it. Thank you so much. So people with close ties to the island say that though they're thousands of miles away, the devastation has been taking its toll. Araceli Crescencio with Scripps News Nashville spoke with a woman from Hawaii who says that she's never seen a fire like this before. What once were considered paradise views have been destroyed and replaced with rubble and ash. Deep family ties there. You know, I still have aunts and uncles who live there, cousins, and that sort of thing. For Kimberly Poole, seeing her childhood memories go up in smoke has been heartbreaking. Her parents were born and raised in Lahaina, and now her family is scrambling to hear back from friends and family members still there. The limited cell service has made communicating challenging. Just going back, it was always just so fun. You know, we would swing on the old banyan tree um, vines like my parents would as kids and everything. And we'd visit all the mom and pop stores that they would go to as kids. And, you know, it's just all gone now. More than 1,000 homes and businesses have been destroyed in Lahaina, many of them places that Poole knew well. My grandfather's church, where he was a Buddhist minister, is burned to the ground. You know, my uh, other churches, too. My mother's um, family's ashes and everything were all there. And, you know, we don't know at this point if those were, you know, kept safe or, you know, if they burned. The videos and heartbreaking stories of survivors who ran to the ocean to stay safe are hard to believe for many who visited the island and took in the magnificent scenery. These places that are considered vacation and destination spots where it's fun and you're gonna have a great time. You don't think about these kind of things happening. And so when it does, it just pulls at you. And it's just, you know, you realize like, oh my gosh, like this can happen anywhere. Poole says she's thankful people are showing their support, but says people looking to donate need to do their research. You don't want the money to go somewhere where you don't mean it to go. Mm -hmm. um, and people take advantage, you know. She says in the true Aloha spirit, she's confident Lahaina will remain strong. Now, if you want to help fire victims in Maui, you can find several organizations accepting donations on our website. It's scriptsnews.com. You can also grab your phone right now, scan the QR code on the bottom of your screen. It's going to take you right to the page. We have coverage on the wildfires. You can check the Scripps News page on X, which is formerly known as Twitter, also on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and on Threads. The federal judge presiding over former President Trump's conspiracy trial warned there are limits to what he can say about the investigation. But Judge Tanya Chutkin also told prosecutors rules don't need to be as strict as they wanted. National political correspondent Abajoy Burnett followed the hearing this morning and says the judge made it clear that she wanted this case tried in court and not on social media. Good afternoon, everyone. Well, there was a very important hearing earlier today revolving around that January 6th 
case in which the former president has been charged four times. And this hearing has to do with a protective order, which has guidelines on what he's able to say or not say in public. There was a win for the defense team when the judge said the prosecution didn't make a strong enough case about what should be considered as sensitive material or non-sensitive material. But on the flip side of things, the government had a win when the judge said they that any people involved in this case should not be able to share material that is not already a part of the public domain. We were able to speak with the attorney for the former president. He didn't say much, but here's what he had to say about today's court appearance. How do you feel after today's proceedings, Mr. Loro? Do you feel as if you guys had solid wins in there? We made all the arguments that we needed to, and we got all the points that we needed to make on the record. Towards the end of this hearing, the judge said if there is inflammatory behavior, such as actions or speech, that reemphasizes the importance for a speedy trial to ensure that there is an impartial jury. The prosecution in this case, they're requesting a potential start date, a trial date of January 2nd, 2024. But there's certainly going to be some pushback on that from the defense attorneys. Ava Joy Burnett, Scripps News, Washington. Nearly one month after his arrest, attorneys for the wife of the man accused and some of the Gilgo Beach murderers are set to speak. We're going to have the details on why straight ahead on Scripps News Live. Also, this. I'm John Matteries with so few homes for sale. Buyers are getting outbid over and over and over again. Is there anything you can do if you're in the market for a home? That story coming up. And don't forget, you can count on Scripps News for all of your news throughout the primetime hours beginning at 6 p.m. Eastern. We'll be right back. I've been putting off getting life insurance, and I'm not getting any younger. Have you been thinking about getting a life insurance plan but just keep putting it off? Was that a yes? Then this message is for you. I'm David Denowitz, and I know the importance of life insurance. And that's why I'm here to tell you it's not too late to get the coverage you need. If you're between the ages of 45 and 85, you can get a policy with a benefit of up to $25,000 and rates available at $5 a week. The phone lines are now open. Just call 800-354-6059. And your acceptance is guaranteed. I have a pre-existing medical condition. Is my acceptance guaranteed? Yes. Can I get accepted without a medical exam? Yes. If you're between 45 and 85, you can't be turned down for this guaranteed acceptance life insurance regardless of your health. Plus, there's no medical exam and no health questions. And rates start at just $5 a week. Remember, if you're between 45 and 85, you can't be turned down regardless of your health. Nothing's more important than family. So call now. Pick up the phone and get guaranteed acceptance life insurance today. Just call 800-354-6059. I'm 72 and on a fixed income. Is my acceptance guaranteed? Yes, your acceptance is guaranteed and your rate can never go up for any reason. You can't be turned down regardless of your health. There's just one simple question. Are you between 45 and 85? If you answer yes, don't wait another minute. Call now. The call is absolutely free and there is no obligation to enroll. Just call 800-354-6059. That's 800-354-6059. How can a photo become a vibrant part of your home? When you go to TryFracture.com and print your images directly on glass. Get beautiful depth and clarity on a sleek, frameless print that's easy to hang and looks incredible in any space. Go to TryFracture.com now to save 20% on glass prints. Hi, I'm Sophia, founder of Pear Eyewear. The only glasses you can change like you change your clothes. Each pair starts with the base frame, then choose from over hundreds of designs, like a top frame from your favorite holiday, or you can even turn your glasses into sunglasses. Every pair starts at just $60, including prescription lenses. Glasses are an extension of your personality, and we're here to celebrate each and every version of you. Discover your next pair at PearEyewear.com. When Lila was ready to sell her ring, she sent it to Worthy where they took care of everything and auctioned it on her terms. Then, Worthy sent Lila her money. You're worthy of more. Get started at Worthy.com.
Welcome back to Scripps News Live. Wall Street is digesting a producer price index report that was higher than expected today. It was up three tenths of a percent from June to July. Checking in on the boards at this hour, stocks are trading mixed right now, halfway through the trading day. Dow Jones, though, is up about 44 points. The S&P is in the red, dropping 12 points, and the Nasdaq is down as well, shedding about 104 points. We're going to keep an eye on it for you. So mortgage rates hit a 30 year high and that spike isn't doing current home buyers any favors. Plus bidding wars have been heating up for affordable homes. Consumer reporter John Matteris takes a closer look at what's proving to be a frustrating season for home buyers. So many homeowners locked into low mortgage rates right now are choosing to stay in their home instead of selling. And that is making this a very difficult time for home buyers. Take a look. Carol Rayheim has been going through homes and dreaming of buying a place like this for over a year. I'm ready to start cooking. But her dreams have been dashed over and over. Beautiful Ranch was our first offer. She and her husband keep getting outbid, even when offering above asking price. Right now it's really a big letdown. It happened again and again. And then we made two other offers um, and just wasn't successful. Her realtors, Denise and Stephen Taylor, say with so few homes for sale, it can be a frustrating battle to win a bidding war. There's still a, not a lot out there, so there's definitely more buyers looking than there are homes for sale. Why? Current homeowners with low mortgage rates are staying put, with newly listed homes on the decline for 56 weeks. They are sitting on 3 percent, 2 and percent, so they're thinking, why should I sell? Plus, mortgage rates are hovering near 7%. The median monthly payment listed on loan applications was more than $2,100 in May, up 14% from a year ago. Look at your credit report. See what your credit standing is. Nathan Grant of Money Tips says focus on what you can control. He says remove unnecessary monthly expenses to save for a down payment and consult with a mortgage professional about what you can afford. It's all even more important when the markets are like this. Denise and Steven say it's essential to be pre-approved for a loan and be prepared to bid above asking price, although it may not be enough. It's a challenge. It's definitely a challenge. And that way you don't waste your money. I'm John Matteris. The CEO of UPS says its drivers will be averaging $170,000 salaries and benefits by the time a new five-year deal is over. 340,000 workers are voting on a tentative contract agreement between the Teamsters Union and UPS management. Voting ends August 22nd. The deal raises average pay for part-timers for at least $21 an hour. Full-time workers will average $49 an hour. Coming up next on Scripps News Live, the Supreme Court blocking Purdue Pharma's $6 billion bankruptcy settlement. We're going to explain what it all could mean for the company's owners and the victims of the opioid crisis. Also, we're going to take a closer look at the push to improve mental health coverage for military service members. Once upon a time, why draft? I think they, they have every right to do what they want to do. But just... they don't have every right. We don't want your straight child to turn gay. We want your gay child to survive. Attention all seniors. You can now get up to $50,000 for your funeral and other final expenses, including your credit card debt, with no medical exam, starting at less than a dollar a day. Oh, honey. You're dead, and I can't stop talking about this baby that's coming. We've also been thinking a lot about our future, and no matter what, we want to make sure we aren't leaving you and your family with any of our debts. Just last week, we read that the price of a funeral can be $8,000 or more. Wow, Jeff and I definitely would not have the money to pay for that. And that's just a funeral. But you don't have to worry. We called, and with one phone call, we were eligible for $50,000 for our funeral and final expenses. Well, that's great, but don't you need to take a medical exam to qualify? You and Mom have some health issues. No, there's no medical exam, and we were able to get coverage right over the phone. And our rates can never be increased, our benefits can never be decreased, and our coverage can never be canceled. I'm so glad you made that call. 
Don't leave loved ones with your debt. Call 800-339-7996 now and see if you qualify for up to $50,000 for your funeral and other final expenses starting at less than a dollar a day. There's no medical exam and you can be approved even if you have pre-existing health conditions. Your rates can never be increased, your benefits can never be decreased, and your coverage can never be canceled. There's no obligation. Call 800-339-7996 now. There's no paperwork, no hidden fees, and no waiting periods. And you can start coverage right over the phone, starting at less than a dollar a day. Call 800-339-7996. That's 800-339-7996. 800 Hey, I'm inside the bank. Where's the five hundred dollars? What? I don't have much time. Where's the five hundred dollars? I said drop your bank, not rob your bank. What? I said drop your bank and get Dave. The banking app? Yeah, I thought this was a lot of work for five hundred dollars. You think? I mean, I would love it if you could uh, come get me. Oh no. Oh, she going to jail. Hello? There's an easier way you can get up to five hundred dollars in five minutes or less when you download Dave. I want it now. The WNBA is on Ion. Wow. Every Friday, the push for the playoffs continues. I can't see nobody stopping me. Tonight, Kalia and the Sky roll into the Big Apple to take on Brianna and the Liberty. Oh, my. Then we're off to Vegas as Natasha and the Mystics try their luck against Asia and the Aces. Money. Sky and Liberty, followed by Mystics Aces. Coverage starts tonight at 8. Check local listings. Only on Ion. We would like to hear from you. You can give us a call on our Scripps News Viewer hotline. That number is toll free. It's one 4 scripts Feel free to share your comments and your story ideas. So authorities on Long Island believe the accused serial killer in the Gilgo Beach murders committed some of the crimes when his family was out of town. They also believe he may have lured some of his victims to his home. Investigators spent 12 weeks looking for evidence in Rex Hewerman's home. And needless to say, this has been more than unnerving for the community and the suspect's wife and two adult children. Scripps News National Correspondent Axel Tercios live for us on Long Island, where the family's attorney will be holding a news conference in the next hour. Axel, tell us, what can we expect? Veronica, we are expecting to hear from the family's attorneys, from the suspect's family's attorneys, the attorneys representing Rex Hewerman's estranged wife and two children. This is the first time they're going to be addressing uh, the members of the press directly to give an update on the family status since that arrest last month. Also, we were told the attorneys will be presenting us, the members of the press, with new pictures of the family's home. So just to recall, the investigators spent 12 weeks looking for evidence inside the home and the family's attorneys are saying that the house is inhabitable because the investigators tore the house apart in order to do their investigation. Also, earlier this week we learned a new development on the case of the judge ordering the suspect to provide a DNA sample next Tuesday. The prosecutor saying that the DNA analysis will have them create a stronger case against the suspect who is charged with three in three murder cases and also he's due back in court on September 27. For now we will be standing by to hear from the attorneys the cameras are set and that announcement is set to begin at 2 p.m. Veronica. All right, we'll be circling back with you. Axel Tercios reporting from Islip Terrace, Long Island. We appreciate it. Thank you. So suicide deaths in the United States hit an all-time high last year. According to government data, an estimated 49,000 people took their own lives, and that is a 2.6% increase from the year before. Over half involved firearms. The suicide rate in the United States is now among the highest in the Western world. And the military is not immune from suicides. Brandon Ponton with Scripps News Norfolk tells us about a push to improve mental health coverage for service members. Following suicides among service members, Congress is currently working on the National Defense Authorization Act, and there are several provisions in it to address suicides and mental health. The parents of Brandon Caserta run a Facebook page that shares posts and information about suicides among service members and encourages those in trouble to get help. Caserta was a locally based sailor who took his own life in 2018. 
News 3 has been working to get confirmation from the Navy about whether there have been additional suicides, but so far hasn't been able to. In one of the cases, the medical examiner told News 3 a sailor died from a gunshot wound to the head, but the manner of death is still pending. The Navy told us this sailor's death is currently under investigation by law enforcement. We just have been having a real serious issue with uh, access to mental health care members of our military. Virginia Senator Tim Kaine has been pushing in Congress for additional resources for service members and says this year's National Defense Authorization Act includes things like easier access to mental health care, tries to increase retention in mental health professionals, and tries to make mental health care more affordable. We've had some particularly challenging instances with Navy suicides in the Hampton Roads area, but you dig into it and you find it's not a Hampton Roads issue and it's not just a Navy issue, it's it's uh, DOD wide. Local Congresswoman Jen Kiggins has also been pushing for more help for service members, especially after a report examining a cluster of suicides in 2022 said the Navy had failed the sailors. If we lose one sailor to suicide, that's one too many, right? The Navy can do better. When the Navy produced this report and said that the Navy had failed its sailors, that's, that's hard to hear, right? That's not what we should be doing right now. We're already struggling with some recruitment retention issues in the military. So taking care of mental health care is really a basic thing. The Brandon Act is also now being implemented in the Department of Defense. The law allows service members to start the process to get a mental health evaluation for any reason at any time in any environment and protects their confidentiality as much as possible. Now maybe suicides in our militaries will go down. As the work continues to help service members get assistance if they need it. In Norfolk, I'm Brendan Ponton for Scripps News. Now, if you are having a mental health crisis, there is help out there. You can call or text 988 Suicide and Crisis Lifeline for confidential support. So U.S. experts aren't nearly as pessimistic about the health of the American economy. National correspondent Nathaniel Reed takes a closer look for us. Cautious optimism from economic experts as last month's inflation data hit the markets. The Labor Department's Consumer Price Index has spoken. Overall consumer prices were up 3.2% from a year earlier. That's up from a 3% annual spike back in June. After 12 straight months of decreasing numbers, seeing any increase might be a bit disconcerting, but it's actually slightly lower than what analysts were expecting. And experts say the more important number to consider here is the core inflation rate. That came in at a mild 0.2%. Any way you look at it, this has been a successful or certainly a more successful compared to historical um, efforts to deal with, with these sort of shocks. So yes, there's been a bit of an uptick here in these numbers, but overall, it's good news for Americans who've been feeling the strain on their wallets for years now. Take food, for example. Prices are still up 4.9% over the past 12 months. But between June and July, the cost of items like eggs, meat, beer, and dairy all went down in price. The gasoline index saw a modest bump of 0.2% last month, but that was offset by falling electricity prices, a 0.7% drop from June to July. And used car costs continued their downward trend as well. Prices fell for a second straight month, down 1.3% from June and 5.6% from this time last year. I think people overall, economists overall, are more confident and maybe more confused, but in a, in a positive way about the fact that this has been a rather successful uh, effort by the Fed to maintain slow increases, incremental increases in the interest rate to bring down the money supply and bring down the inflation rate. Some analysts say the steady slowdown could keep the Federal Reserve from raising interest rates once again when they meet in September. Last month, the Fed bumped rates from a range between 5.25% and 5.5%, a two-decade high. Nathaniel Reed, Scripps News, Washington. I'm Veronica Dela Cruz. For the audience leaving us right now, your local programming is up next. Don't forget, you can always check us out on ScrippsNews.com as well. If you're staying with us right now, we have much more news headed your way right here on Scripps News Live, including a Scripps News investigation on decaying bridges across America. There's a new victim of identity theft every three seconds. And checking your credit score or bank statements may not be enough to alert you. That's because identity threats appear in more places than you realize. Identity thieves can use your information to open loans, transfer home titles, even commit crimes. Someone stole my information and tried to buy a car in my name. LifeLock monitors for threats to your identity, including ones you may miss, and alerts you if there's an issue. 
And if you're a victim, your dedicated U.S.-based restoration specialist will work to fix it. If something happens, you have somebody fighting for you. All plans backed by LifeLock's million-dollar protection package, including reimbursement for stolen funds. I know LifeLock has me covered. LifeLock. Identity theft protection starts here. Call the number on your screen or visit LifeLock.com slash 25 now and use promo code 25 now to save 25% on your first year of identity theft protection. Enroll now. When Lila was ready to sell her ring, she sent it to Worthy, where they took care of everything and auctioned it on her terms. Then Worthy sent Lila her money. You're worthy of more. Get started at Worthy.com. How does Klein Inspector get among the most big verdicts and settlements of any law firm in the country? Because Klein Inspector is an award-winning team with five doctor lawyers, the most of any firm in the United States. And that's why the New York Times calls Klein Inspector a powerhouse law firm. So if a defective product, motor vehicle accident, or medical malpractice caused a catastrophic injury, call Klein Inspector. Why is Aaron happy? Well, Carvana has tens of thousands of cars under $20,000. So Aaron's folks could help hook him up with a new ride. We'll drive you happy at Carvana. Hey there, welcome to Scripps News Live. Great to see you on this Friday. I'm Veronica Dela Cruz. Let's get you caught up right now in the day's top stories. At least 55 people killed in wildfires burning in Hawaii. Those who survived say that there was no warning of the approaching flames. Emergency management records confirm there were no sirens to alert the island. Instead, officials sent emergency alerts to mobile phones, TVs, and radios, but power and cellular outages may have prevented them from reaching the recipients. Most of Lahaina is now gone. A business owner shot this video and says many are still finding the devastation difficult to comprehend. One gentleman we walked past was sitting in a lawn chair on the sidewalk across from where his house, house was and just sitting there, like just looking at the remains and nothing left. All he had was the lawn chair he was sitting on really in like a small backpack. Authorities have brought in cadaver sniffing dogs to search for more victims. Attorney General Merrick Garland announcing that he will appoint a special counsel in the Department of Justice's investigation into Hunter Biden. David Weiss, a U.S. attorney in Delaware, has been investigating the financial and business dealings of the president's son since 2019. Garland said Weiss asked to be appointed as special counsel so he could continue his work. Weiss will also continue to concurrently serve as U.S. Attorney for the District of Delaware, a position he was appointed to by former President Donald Trump. House Republicans are also preparing their own investigation into Hunter Biden. The Illinois Supreme Court ruled today that the state's assault weapon ban is constitutional, and in doing so, it overturned a lower court's decision. However, it's not the end of disputes over the state's assault weapons ban. It faces challenges in federal courts as well. Turning now to a Scripps News investigation, tens of billions of federal dollars set aside to repair tens of thousands of decaying bridges, and it won't be enough. Earlier this year, the Biden administration announced $40 billion of the landmark $1.2 trillion bipartisan infrastructure bill will be set aside to repair or replace these bridges. Now the move followed years of dangerous and deadly bridge collapses. But the Scripps News investigative team uncovered new information. And it shows that we may have a bigger problem than we first realized, and it will require a much bigger budget to fix. Joining me now is Scripps News investigative correspondent Patrick Terpstra. Patrick, I know you've been digging deep. Tell us more about your investigation here and what you found exactly. Well, Veronica, we found a startling number of bridges coast to coast that are corroded, they're cracked. We even saw bridges with holes in them. Now, we went to Pittsburgh. This is a place known as the City of Bridges, and it's a place that's more familiar than most with what can happen when a bridge is allowed to stay in a state of neglect. It's a frigid January morning in Pittsburgh in 2022 when a thunderous crash shakes the Regent Square neighborhood. South Braddock Avenue and Forbes Avenue. A lot of screaming and static on the phone. This doorbell camera captures the sound at 6.39 a.m. 
It sounded like an explosion or some kind of a bomb dropping. Melissa Back is awakened by the rumble. I honestly thought we were being attacked. I had to zigzag between the trees because they have a lot of the areas cut off. She races to the scene a block and a half away from her home and discovers the source of the noise. It's kind of like a scary, kind of a scary scene, but you can see the bridge completely. The Fern Hollow Bridge has fallen. Several cars and a city bus now sit in a chasm of concrete and steel wreckage 100 feet below. All I kept thinking was that every morning I take my daughter to preschool and just think about what could have happened today. Somehow, all 10 people on the bridge that morning survived, but our Scripps News investigation discovered it never should have gotten to this point. Warnings about Fern Hollow were ignored for years. Documents we found in litigation filed by survivors of the collapse show a long paper trail of neglect going back to 2001. This is a dangerous situation, and you just ignored it. And I don't understand how that happens with our lives. While collapsing bridges are exceptionally rare, neglect of these vital structures is common. A Scripps News investigation found thousands of bridges across the country, like this one, in need of replacement or major repair. Fixing them has become a centerpiece of President Biden's push to improve America's crumbling infrastructure. Yeah, appreciate it. Thank you. As chance would have it, he was in Pittsburgh the day of the Fern Hollow collapse to talk about infrastructure. He went by the disaster site and said it would jumpstart his plans to reconstruct bridges all over the country. You're going to fix them all. Not a joke. This is going to be a gigantic change. Since he took office, money from the federal government, including from the infrastructure law he championed, has helped pay for over 6,400 bridge repair and replacement efforts across the country. But there are many more bridges in need of help. Some 14,000 bridges identified in a Scripps News analysis have been rated in poor condition for at least a decade. Altogether, they carry more than 46 million passengers every day. That list that number is not going to go down. Kent Harries is a structural engineering professor at the University of Pittsburgh. How did we get to a point as a country where so many bridges are in so much need? Neglect. We've been neglecting our infrastructure pretty much since we built it. The list of bridges needing repair or replacement spans the entire country. There's the nearly 100-year-old Magnolia Bridge in Seattle, weakened by an earthquake in 2001. In Massachusetts, it'll take four billion dollars to replace the ailing Sagamore and Bourne bridges connecting Cape Cod. And outside Denver, a bridge going over six lanes of US 85 has spindly cracks all over the bottom of its concrete deck. Is a poorly rated bridge in danger of collapse? No. It means it needs attention. It, needs, it means it needs repair. Retrofit, rehabilitation, and in a few extreme cases, replacement now. Even in Pittsburgh, more than a year after the Fern Hollow disaster, we found bridges in startling states of disrepair. And the bridge is up here, a couple lights. Harry's takes us to see this bridge, known as the 28th Street Bridge, which has parts dating back to 1890. Thousands of people use it every day. It doesn't look like it's in great shape. It's not in great shape, no. We found records detailing deterioration going back 30 years. We can see older steel you get this kind of flaking. This is a great example of just not having the resources to address what's necessary. The city says a full rehab is in the works for this bridge, but not till 2026. Nearby at the Maple Avenue Bridge, we discover holes in the deck where you can see blue sky. Oh yeah, there it is. I got him, I have him. Thanks honey, you as well. And across town, Marcy Kemmler runs the diner below the California Avenue Bridge. She shows us her collection of rusted pieces that she says fall from the bridge daily. I guarantee you, if we walk over there, we'll see it. Like, these are bolts. It makes me so mad. This bridge dates back to 1928 and shows its age. When you just sort of touch the bottom of this bridge, it just comes apart in your hands. The supports of this bridge, I'm barely even pulling in these pieces just come apart. I have to focus on what we have to do to make every resident in this city safe. Mayor Ed Ganey had been in office for less than a month when Fern Hollow fell. He immediately ordered a review of all of the city's bridges. 
New repair projects are ongoing, but work on many of the bridges is still years away. We're not saying that we don't have to address these issues. That's why we prioritize them. But we're working towards them based on the ones that need the most need right now. Let's talk about that because it sounds like you have many bridges that are in need of repair. Why not just fix all of those right away? Well, if we could, we would. <laughs> Funding is a major issue. I'm, I'm so fortunate that President Biden focused on a bipartisan infrastructure bill, but the reality is we need more. A U.S. Transportation Department spokesperson we contacted says it's true that the recent infusion of federal funding is not enough to tackle the backlog of bridges in need. It took about a year to rebuild the Fern Hollow Bridge, and it recently reopened. Melissa Back once again walks it with her daughter, but says she will never forget the day the old bridge fell. This could have been so much worse. Like, this could have been devastating. I'm struck by how strong your emotions are about this bridge a year and a half after the collapse. Because it's very jarring, you know? I mean, when you're a parent, like, that's honestly all I can think about. It's just like your sense of security and trust in something that you, like, rely on daily, you, you can't trust anymore. So should you fear going on any of these bridges that we found? The answer is no, according to the experts. These are bridges that may be in poor condition, but that doesn't mean that they're unsafe. A lot of these bridges now have to undergo many more inspections, but they are at risk of having weight limits placed on them or having to be shut down for emergency repairs. But Veronica, of course, nobody ever thought the Fern Hollow Bridge would ever collapse. Yeah. Absolutely. Patrick, thank you so much for your investigating. Patrick Terps are reporting live for us from Washington. Well, experts have updated the 2023 hurricane outlook halfway through the current season, and scientists are now calling for an above normal level of activity. Before, they had forecast near normal, and the agency is predicting that we could see between 6 and 11 hurricanes, and at least two could be major, meaning a Category 3 or stronger. Floodwaters can overtake communities in a matter of moments, and officials in Delaware are turning to artificial intelligence to make evacuations faster and more efficient in beachside areas. National correspondent Maya Rodriguez shows us how it works. When you're behind the wheel, there is a lot going on behind the scenes, especially with how traffic is moving. And now artificial intelligence is increasingly playing a role in how you move around on the nation's roads. 23 to TR 53. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Tell that TMC, this is best. Information on what's happening on all the roads in Delaware. Four. From traffic signals to traffic flow streams in here, the state's transportation management center. Signals have been my business over 50 years. Everybody takes them for granted. Gene Donaldson is the operations manager here. I've been implementing signal systems when they used to be pre-time, fixed time, dial spinning. A lot's changed since then, and now the state of Delaware is one of a handful of places where artificial intelligence, or AI, is about to take on a greater role in how drivers get around. We are adding AI to the operation of all the traffic signals, which is over 1,300 in the state. And we're working on machine vision as part of that. That complex system involves traffic lights, cameras, and sensors, along with data coming in from weather stations and emergency responder channels all coalescing within AI. The artificial intelligence then makes traffic management decisions based on that information. Our testing shows it's about 98% reliable in identifying where there's a problem. We only have so many technicians in there monitoring and doing other critical work. AI is going to be able to watch far more than a human being. Part of this project, paid for with state and federal infrastructure dollars, focuses on dealing with the potential impact of flooding in Delaware, the state with the lowest mean elevation in the country. Every year, more than 20 million visitors flock to this small state, many heading to the beaches in the summer. We're subject to flooding more and more frequently. Not all visitors are familiar with the roads and which ones are prone to flooding. This roadway floods a lot. Traffic managers say AI can serve as a predictor, sending out messages to drivers via roadway monitors and through smartphones about which roads to avoid 
and help manage potential evacuations. This is one of the more advanced systems, and over the next year, it will be one of the more advanced systems in the United States. And it could become even more advanced. In any computing system, the more information a system has, the better decisions it can make. Stan Caldwell is executive director of the Traffic 21 Institute at Carnegie Mellon University. He recently spoke to us about how autonomous or self-driving vehicles will be communicating with these so-called smart roads in the near future. There will be positive impacts and there will be negative impacts. And so being able to get the real world data in a real world environment is very important. Ten four, yes, please. Back in Delaware, traffic managers say they know there's always a chance for a cyber attack on such a system. They wouldn't get into details, but insist it is protected. We have a dedicated effort to make sure our data is secure. Traffic managers say AI will eventually be able to use the network of traffic cameras and sensors to predict if a vehicle is about to run a red light and then hold the light green to prevent an accident. The more you advance this technology, it's going to reduce those serious kinds of accidents. Potentially saving time, money, and lives. Maya Rodriguez, Scripps News, Lewis, Delaware. Coming up next on Scripps News Live, striking Hollywood writers are set to start another round of negotiations with major studios. We're going to share the details next. If you have this, and you get this, you could end up with this. Unexpected out-of-pocket costs, which for those on Medicare or soon to be, is a good reason to take charge of your health care. So consider this, an AARP Medicare Supplement Insurance Plan from United Healthcare. Why? Because Medicare alone doesn't pay for everything. And what it doesn't pay for, like deductibles and co-pays, could really add up, even thousands of dollars a year. Medicare supplement plans help by paying some of what Medicare doesn't and making your out-of-pocket costs a lot more predictable. Call United Healthcare today and ask for your free decision guide. Learn more about plan options and rates to fit your needs. Now, if you like this, greater freedom, You'll love that Medicare supplement plans have no networks and no referrals needed. See any doctor, any specialist, anywhere in the U.S., as long as they accept Medicare patients. These types of plans also give you more flexibility when traveling in the U.S. Your plan goes with you, anywhere you go in the country. Even better, these are the only plans of their kind endorsed by AARP. Call United Healthcare today for your free decision guide. So if you have this and want less out of pocket costs and more peace of mind, consider adding this, an AARP Medicare supplement plan. Take charge of your healthcare today. Just use this or this to call United Healthcare about an AARP Medicare supplement plan. Hey, I'm inside the bank. Where's the $500? What? I don't have much time. Where's the $500? I said drop your bank, not rob your bank. What? I said drop your bank and get Dave. The banking app? Yeah, I thought this was a lot of work for $500. You think? I mean, I would love it if you could uh, come get me. Oh, no. Oh, she going to jail. Hello? There's an easier way you can get up to $500 in five minutes or less when you download Dave. There's a better way to begin your mornings. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Morning Rush. Get the stories that will shape each day. That's a lot of folks talking about this. So you can get on with yours. Morning Rush, weekday mornings starting at 7, 6 central. Only on Scripps News. Hi, I'm Christina Hartman, head of news standards here at Scripps News. We make a promise to you every day to deliver the facts from an independent point of view. Our company motto, Give Light and the People Will Find Their Own Way, has guided us for generations. 
Now it's time to turn the spotlight over to you, our viewers. We've received thousands of calls on our toll-free hotline, and we've listened to every single one of your story ideas and thoughts about our coverage. Many of you offer praise, while others tell us there's room for improvement. Viewers like Steve in Reno, Nevada. You guys used to be great about uh, bringing in the news, but now you're getting way too opinionated. That was in response to our use of the word migrant as opposed to immigrant at various points within our coverage of the expiration of Title 42, which was a COVID era provision used by both the Trump and Biden administrations to expel migrants in the name of public health. We use both migrant and immigrant depending on the relevant situation. Broadly speaking, a migrant is anyone who travels internationally, like migrant workers who intend to return to their home countries. A migrant becomes an immigrant when they intend to stay permanently in a new country. We've stayed true to this decision, using migrant to describe those currently entering communities like Chicago and New York City by the hundreds each week. This is an important, ongoing story we'll continue to follow. In an age of mistrust and uncertainty, it's our mission here at Scripps News to give you reliable, factual information without hyperspin. So please keep it coming. Let us know how we're doing, good or bad, anytime on our toll-free Scripps News viewer hotline at 1-833-4-SCRIPS. Welcome back to Scripps News Live. So we're learning more information now about a midair scare involving a United Airlines flight bound for California. Federal investigators say the plane nearly crashed last December because the co-pilot misheard directions from the captain. The jet went into a nosedive shortly after taking off from Hawaii, and it came within 800 feet of the Pacific Ocean before pilots pulled it up. Both pilots have received additional training and are still working for the airline. So striking Hollywood writers heading back to the bargaining table today, and they're asking studios for better pay and protection from artificial intelligence. Several writers say that they are struggling to make ends meet since the rise of streaming services impacted their pay, and they walked off the job 102 days ago. The strike has delayed numerous film and TV productions. Coming up next on Scripps News Live, access to space is no longer exclusive to just astronauts. It's really the best ride ever. And you could say I would do this again, and I would love to do this again. <laughs> We're going to hear more reaction from the civilians who boarded Virgin Galactic's first tourism flight. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Kirk Kaiser. And did you know the average funeral costs around $10,000? And if you don't have enough insurance to cover funeral costs, credit card debt, and other expenses, your family is going to get stuck with the bill. Don't let that happen. Call right now. And if you're over 50, you can get up to $30,000 in affordable life insurance, and your acceptance is guaranteed. That's right. If you're over 50, you can't be turned down for this insurance, regardless of your health. Plus, there's no medical exam and no health questions. Your rate will never go up. Your coverage will never go down. And rates start as low as $5 a week. Your coverage begins as soon as your application is received. Don't wait until it's too late. Just call 800-760-7793. Coverage is guaranteed regardless of your health and cannot be canceled without your approval. Don't leave your family with a huge bill for your funeral. With one fast and easy call, get up to $30,000 in affordable life insurance to help cover funeral expenses and credit card debt, and maybe even leave something for your kids and your grandkids. Remember, if you're over 50, you can't be turned down regardless of your health. There's no medical exam and no health questions. Best of all, your rates start as low as $5 a week, and your rate will never increase. Nothing is more important than family. So don't leave them with a lot of bills to pay when you're gone. Don't leave your family with a lot of bills to pay for your funeral. Call right now. Acceptance is guaranteed. Call right now. Call now. Call 800-760-7793. That's 800-760-7793. The FBI calls it house stealing, the latest scam where a cyber thief transfers the title of your home out of your name 
and steals your hard-earned equity. It's roughly 60 to 90 days for that person to even figure out that they're the victim of this crime. You start getting foreclosure notices and you realize you've got four mortgages on your house that you didn't even know existed. Unfortunately, it's on you to protect yourself. You might already be a victim. Check your title status now at HomeTitleLock.com. If you're one of the many people struggling financially right now, Bridget's got your back. They'll send you $50 to $250 instantly with no credit check or interest. Download the Bridget app today and get $50 to $250 instantly. Breaking down the headlines. We're going to take a deeper dive. With up-to-the-minute information, giving you the whole story. So let's get you caught up on some of today's top stories. The Debrief, live tonight, starting at 6, 5 central, only on Scripps News. Russia is heading to the moon for the first time in nearly 50 years. The Luna 25 craft launched earlier this morning. Russia's government says this is a way to ensure its, quote, guaranteed access to the moon's surface. The spacecraft is slated to orbit around the moon for up to seven days and then land on August 23rd, which is the same day as an Indian shuttle. The Soviet Union, the U.S. and China are the only countries with successful moon landings. The next American moon mission will happen in November. A former Olympian, wellness coach, and college student have one thing in common, and they all got to travel to space. The group was on board Virgin Galactic's first tourism flight yesterday. Scripps News correspondent Clayton Sandell shares how this revolutionary feat expands the doors to space exploration. Three, two, one, release, release, release. High above New Mexico, Virgin Galactic spacecraft rocketed toward the stars and the history books. We're at Mach 2. We're in the vertical, headed towards space. On board, three passengers getting a few moments of weightlessness. Keisha Shahaf and 18-year-old Anastasia Mayers are the first mother and daughter to fly to space. My interest in going to space really started from when I was two years old and just looking up in the skies. The pair are also the first female astronauts from the Caribbean. They won their ride to space in a charity lottery. It's really the best ride ever. And you could say, I would do this again, and I would love to do this again. <laughs> I was shocked at the things that you feel. Mm -hmm. You are so much more connected to everything than you would expect to be. Like, you felt like a part of the team, a part of the ship, a part of the universe, a part of Earth. It was incredible. 80-year-old John Goodwin waited nearly two decades to go to space. He bought his ticket in 2005. Attitude of space for all is a wonderful attitude. A former Olympic canoeist, Goodwin, is the first Olympian to go to space and the second to be diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. I'm hoping that I instill in other people around the world, as well as people with Parkinson's, that it doesn't stop you doing things that are out of the, the normal. Virgin Galactic space tourist flight comes after years of delays, lagging behind competitors Blue Origin and SpaceX. The company, founded by British billionaire Richard Branson, says it has 800 paying customers on a wait list. Today, Branson watched the flight with the astronauts' families in Antigua and Barbuda. Goodwin not only got his trip to space, he got a bargain. When he first signed up all those years ago, the price was $200,000. Today, the cost is more than double. Clayton Sandell, Scripps News, Denver. It's like so much fun. Speaking of fun, tonight on ION, we have a full slate of games for you from the WNBA. First up at 8 p.m. Eastern, it is the Chicago Sky taking on the New York Liberty. And then, to cap off the night, the reigning champions, the Las Vegas Aces, will take on the Washington Mystics. And that's going to happen at 10 p.m. Eastern. Grab the popcorn. I'm Veronica Dela Cruz. Thank you so much for joining us today. For the audience leaving us right now, your local programming is up next. Don't go too far. Remember, you can always check us out online at scriptsnews.com. And if you're staying with us, we have much more news headed your way on Scripps News Live. I'll be back with you at 3 p.m. Eastern. And in the meantime, Lauren Magarino is up next.